بحضور عدد كبير من الشخصيات السياسية والدبلوماسية والروحية والاجتماعية أحيا مركز رفيق الحريري للدراسات في واشنطن أتلانتيك كونسل ذكرى استشهاد الرئيس الحريري الثامنة عشر في كندي سنتر كلمات عدة استذكرت مسيرة الرئيس الشهيد رفيق الحريري It is a pleasure to be here among so many friends and distinguished guests. I know my father, may he rest in peace, would be proud to know that his legacy is being sustained in Washington through the work of the Atlantic Council. And, the, and he would be deeply honored to know now of the awards being presented tonight in his name. As you saw in the video, my father had a unique vision. He knew that young people simply wish to live with dignity. They wanted to pursue higher education and be able to find jobs after graduation and live comfortably without having to rely on their parents or international aid. Rafi Hariri was passionate about education and economic opportunity, two keys to unlocking the region's potential. He instilled in me a desire to work hard and give back whenever the opportunity presented itself. The awards we are presenting tonight are a testament to his vision and ethos. Rafi Hariri believed in taking care of his people, first and foremost. Sir Magdi Yaqub's lifelong work to offer life-saving transplants and medical care to those in need represents just that. Again, thank you so much, uh, Will, and thank you, uh, Fred, and the Atlanta Council for your hospitality. And of course, for the Hariri Center for the extraordinary work uh, that has been achieved over this past de decade. Uh, for a decade, the Hariri Center has brought people together through its remarkable team of experts. Many of them, of course, are here today. Uh, those of us who work on Iraq and on what we do with about uh, Abbas uh, Kadim, who I'm sure is here. The extensive reach in Washington and throughout the Middle East region. The center has expanded opportunities for entrepreneurs foster reform, strengthen the transformative role of women, and help forge coalitions to really unleash the region's human potential uh, in the spirit of Rafi Kariri. The center advocates for progress through interconnectedness, moderation, and building ecosystems for mutual prosperity. And its vision, the vision that we've heard discussed tonight, for a more peaceful Middle East region, forged through mutual interests, including wherever possible between historic rivals and adversaries, with a keen focus, and this is important, on practical, realistic, and implementable policy recommendations, inspires the work that we do every day in the Biden administration. And it's why we consider the Atlanta Council and the Rary Center in particular such an important partner. If you think about it, over the past couple years, from the historic maritime boundary deal between Israel, Israel and Lebanon, a now 10-month-long ceasefire in Yemen, initial rapprochement and now strengthening relations between Turkey and UAE, Turkey and Israel, Qatar and Bahrain, UAE and Qatar, the rivalries that had polarized the Middle East region for so many years now being bridged through diplomacy, overlapping interests, all examples of initiatives in the spirit of the experts we deal with all the time from the Atlantic Center and the Hariri Center. And of course, we're grateful for the broader work of the Atlanta Council, which supports the expansion and deepening of the Abraham Accords, or new formats, such as the Negev Forum, which recently brought together the largest gathering of Israelis and Arabs in decades to discuss cooperation in fields ranging from security to climate, commerce, tourism, promoting tolerance, and education. So this is really a moment of tremendous, we were just talking at our table, Tremendous opportunity in the Middle East, opportunities that have not been seen in decades, albeit together with tremendous risk and tremendous challenges. And I have to say up top, I'm honored to be seated next to the Turkish ambassador, and we are working uh, literally around the clock, and one of the reasons I was late here tonight, um, on the earthquake response in Turkey and Syria, and our heart goes out to everybody who's been affected uh, by this horrific uh, tragedy. So with that backdrop and gratitude for the work of the Atlantic Council and the Rafi Kariri Center, I want to turn to uh, U.S. policy in the region. And forgive me, but I rarely get a captive audience with many of our critics and many of our supporters. So uh, I thought I'd just go through uh, what we're trying to do 
uh, in some depth, but I'll be as, as brief as possible. President Biden's, Biden's Middle East policy is clear principled, realistic and pragmatic, yet ambitious about what U.S. engagement and partners can achieve together. This policy, it's a new framework for the region, was set forth by the President at the GCC Plus Three Summit in Jeddah earlier last summer, and later incorporated into our national security strategy released a couple months later. And it's based on America's unparalleled uh, comparative advantage in building partnerships to strengthen deterrence, while using diplomacy wherever possible to de-escalate tensions, reduce risks of new conflicts, and set a long-term foundation for stability with a sustainable, proactive, and permanent U.S. military and diplomatic presence. Because as the work of the Hariri Center exemplifies, the future of the Middle East region may be defined as much by climate, technological, and demographic change as by traditional security matters. And in all of those areas, the United States is and will remain an essential partner of choice, we firmly believe. This is a unique comparative advantage of ours, and it's one we are determined to sharpen and enhance over the coming months and years as we increase our own resilience and strength at home, which I can't emphasize enough. So just in closing, I want to, I want to thank Fred, Will, the Atlantic Council, and most importantly, the dedicated professionals from the Hariri Center working every day to forge a more peaceful, integrated, prosperous Middle East region and to invest in the transformative power of individuals in this extraordinary region of the world. And on behalf of President Biden, we are proud to partner with all of you. Thank you so much. It is an honor and a pleasure to be with you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, and all, these, all, all you distinguished guests here at the Kennedy Center. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to remember Rafiq Hariri. Of course, five minutes will never be enough to say what needs to be said about Sheikh Rafiq. I'm glad you had the opportunity to see this uh, video. I shall not speak of the self-made man from Sidon in the south of Lebanon who rose up to become a very successful and highly respected Lebanese, Saudi, Arab international businessman. And I shall not speak of the incredibly generous philanthropist who, amongst many other achievements, gave tens of thousands of young Lebanese men and women the opportunity he was not given to study in the best universities of Europe, the United States and Canada. And I shall not speak of the political figure who was welcomed in the White House, the Elysee Palace, 10 Downing Street, and equivalent places in Beijing, New Delhi, Islamabad, Cairo, Pretoria, Tehran, Ankara, Rome, Madrid, and any other capital you would care to, know, to name in the world. I will just say a very, very few words about Rafiq Hariri, the peacemaker, the man who during the civil war in his beloved country never stopped working to end the civil war and restore peace. As we remember the message of Pope John Paul II, Saint Pope John Paul II, who translated his love for Lebanon as follows, Lebanon is more than a country. It is a message of freedom and an example of pluralism for East and West. Ladies and gentlemen, without equality, there can be no peace. And without peace, there is no prosperity, no societal progress, and no hope. Rafi knew this, Rafi fought for this. very much indeed. Uh, now it is my distinct uh, honor and privilege to most humbly accept this award on behalf 
of all the workers who dedicated their life, literally, to improving human life and importantly, spreading knowledge, the same like what you have heard uh, from the Hariri Foundation. Now, the dedication went on to also spread knowledge and importantly, improve our only home, planet Earth, which is also the home of our children, which is currently being eroded systematically. Thank you for making me part of this historical event. The region is also an arena for major political and social transformations that puts it at the epicenter of regional turmoil, which often jeopardizes the peace and tranquility that we actually uh, that we actually strive to to support. At the Atlantic Council, we look beyond the tra traditional considerations and see the immense strategic importance of the Middle East in an ever-changing world. We also see and embrace the human potential, the vibrant societies, the innovative youth, and the comparative advantages in many sectors. Uh, the friendship between the uh, MENA region and the United States dates back to 1786, when Morocco formally recognized the U.S. by signing a treaty of peace and friendship. The Atlantic Council, through its Rafi Career Center and through its Middle East programs, is committed to reinforcing these long-standing ties in a global context marked by increasing shifting prior polar polarities. <clears throat> 